This is like a really basic biochar um, barrel. Um, so what we do here is whenever we're doing, if we're replacing a fence, replacing a gate, if we're building a house, all the workers here, everybody knows, you just bring the scraps over here. We'll take the nails out of them and cut them up into smaller pieces. So all these are different, like these are construction scraps. This is from an old building we took down. Some of it's old fencing, old doors, whatever it is. And anyways, we just chop it all down. And what we try to do, the only thing we try to do is when we burn it, we try and do a batch of similar thickness wood. So like if we're gonna be doing, like right now, I'm doing a thinner batch, so like I'm not gonna put in a four by four, right? Or like a 20 centimeter, 20 centimeter piece of wood. Cause this is just gonna take longer to burn and it's not gonna, gonna fully turn to charcoal. By the time this turns to charcoal, these thinner pieces will turn completely to ash. So that's the only thing. We just want roughly the similar size pieces in there, similar thickness, but we can use anything. Like we have old bamboo stakes in here. Um, I've done it before with corn, uh, just the, the, the spent stalks of corn. You just get, you get less volume at the end, but you can use that. You can use spent sugar cane. You can use just about anything, twigs and branches from the bush that you clean up, anything you want, you can put in here. Anything that'll burn, anything that's wood. Yeah, so when we when we load this up, we're using material that's similar to thickness, but we're also when we're loading it up, we want it packed fairly tight, but not so tight, not so tight that the fire can't get around the different pieces. And also we want to pack it kind of evenly. You'll find with these ones here, this barrel, it's a lot easier to build a barrel like this, but it's just a little harder to operate it really well. Um, so you just kind of want an even density of wood inside of it. You don't want a whole bunch packed and stacked on one side and then really loose on the other side. It'll just burn uneven. Yeah, so we start this at the top. So the way this works is we're going to create a fire on top here. And it's basically like a candle. It's going to burn down over time all the way down to the bottom. We have holes drilled in the bottom of the barrel to let oxygen come up. So that oxygen comes up, meets this fire, right, and allows this fire to burn. And then you'll see once we put the lid on, what we're going to do is actually create an oxygen deficient environment in between this fire and the top what we want is we want this wood to burn and create heat enough heat to gasify the wood above it but not so much um, flame where we're actually going to be turning it into ash so we wanted to cook with the heat not with the flame itself what what made you choose this design over the double barrel or other kind of systems that are available yeah, for me, this is a good balance between complexity of building it, right, and and efficiency of running it. So you can actually see, like, over here is another version, right? So that's just an open top one. We literally just make a bonfire in there, and then when you get enough what you would call charcoal, you put it out, right? And you can do the same thing. You can just dig a trench in the ground, and same thing, just keep adding more material on the top so it kind of smothers out the fire on the bottom as it chars and then you can throw dirt on it or water on it and be done, right? And that's another easy way. This one right here is in between, the, like the double barrel ones, they're more complex. You're building a barrel on the outside, a barrel on the inside, you're shoving all your wood on the inside barrel, you're lighting it and walking away. Um, it's much easier to operate, but it's just a little bit more um, difficult to build. You need two barrels, right? And so we chose this one just because this is what we had. We had one barrel sitting around. It's pretty easy to operate. You just have to be, pay attention to it so you can put it out at the right time. That's the only difference between this and a, and a double barrel one. Um, so this one here, if I was to walk away from this and just let it burn, then what would happen is we'd come back and be all ash. In a double barrel one, you walk away and let it burn. The next day you come back, the inside barrel is perfect biochar. So you can just walk away from it. So this one though, I just have to keep checking it. And we'll notice like it'll stay cold. And basically once it gets hot all the way to the bottom, that means it's cooked all the way down and then we just soak it with water and then we're done. So now that we've got it started up and going, what we want is we want to have to put a lid on this. We want a gap at the top. So I've actually got a little piece of rebar along the edges, just a little scrap rebar. And this is just for us with this barrel. We figure this, this thickness of rebar kind of works for a good gap, but everybody's barrel and what you guys use is different. So the gap could be a little bigger, a little smaller, but what we're doing now is we basically want to semi choke out the top of the fire. So there's no auction coming in from the top anymore. All this auction is now coming from the bottom. And you can hear it starting to go. So it's going to be sucking air through those holes in the bottom. It uses all that auction at the fire. 
and then this adds a little bit more oxygen to be able to burn off the gases. And that's why we have clear up here. There's no smoke coming out because there's actually another fire that exists in here. So we have the fire here that's burning the wood, and then we have a fire here that's burning the gases that's coming off of the wood, and that's why it burns off clean. So this is a bag that we did before. Um, so this is finished, the finished charcoal. It's not biochar yet because there's no biology in it. Then you see it kind of crumbles apart nice and easily. And that's what you're looking for. No ash. Nice and black charcoal, cooked all the way through. All right, so even the bigger pieces, they break apart easily. So that's what you're looking for. So the reason we do biochar is that now inside of this structure of the wood, now that all of the, the non-carbon material has been gasified and removed, it leaves all these little millions and millions of little cavities. And each one of those is a home for microbes. So the whole point of this is to actually, it doesn't give anything to the soil, there's no nutrients it's giving, it's not doing anything like that for the soil. All we're doing is creating a home for nutrients and microbes to be in. Water as well. So what that happens then is once we actually activate this or get the microbes into this, there's gonna be a bunch of nutrients and microbes sitting in here. So whenever your plants need something, they can send out their roots and say, hey, knock, knock, I need whatever nutrient and that microbe can come out and give it to the plant, right? It's just sitting there, water sitting there as well. So even if you go through a drought period, a dry period, um, even if you were to till your soil, anything like that, the microbes will have a stronghold inside of this charcoal, right? And then they can come back out and reflourish and, and, and re-inoculate your soil after the drought period's over, so forth. However though, for a little microbe to get to the inside of this piece of charcoal, it takes a long time. So what we want to do is break it up. And that's something that actually most people have a difficult time with. And you see people that'll put it in their driveway and drive over with their vehicles. You'll see people hitting it with hammers, all this stuff. It actually works out really well for us. We have these rammers that we have made up for our ram earth houses that we build when we ram by hand. And they're just about perfect for the way we do this. So I just take an old actual, you take anything you want, any wooden box or whatever. This is just an old B box actually. This is from a new hive. Um, don't need this anymore so we just throw some charcoal in there and then we're just going to crush it by hand real quick and then that's what we're looking for. So that much finer charcoal, almost dust, doesn't have to be perfect, right? But that finer stuff there, that's gonna be easier for microbes to get in and out of it, right, than those big chunks. But now this here though, what would happen if we put this directly on our soil, what's gonna happen is the microbes love these houses. They love to live in here. So does the nutrients. This, is, this will suck up the nutrients from the soil. So what'll actually happen is it'll suck up and lock up the nutrients and microbes in the soil for several seasons. So if I was to put this right on the garden, our garden would suffer for a couple of years until the microbes build back up enough so they've housed everything in here, plus they're able to go back into the soil for that nutrients to overflow from the, the biochar and come back into the soil. So what we first do is we wanna get microbes in it. And there's lots of ways you can do that. And you'll see all over YouTube, the people have these special activation liquids and they put bubblers on them and they put it in a bucket for X hours and this and that. Um, however, the way we do it here, the way I like to do it is just the lazy way. So we have a lot of animals around, we have compost piles, so we can just put this in other places. So our vermicompost bin, right, we'll throw this right in there. Those worms are gonna eat the real fine carbon, they're gonna eat that, it's gonna go through their gut, they're gonna poop it out and it's gonna be full of microbes. I don't have to do anything, I just throw it right in there um, it also helps with any diseases and stuff like that in with the worms as well. We also are just going to throw it right into our chicken run. Uh, it helps keep the smell down anyhow. So if you've got a chicken run near your house, it's great. The carbon helps keep the smell down. Chickens are going to scratch this. They're going to poop on it. They're going to mix it in. It's going to get all of their microbiota in there. And they're going to do all that work for us, right? We also put this in our human manure uh, compost piles. We put this in our cattle manure compost piles. We basically put it anywhere, anything that's gonna go on the garden that's gonna be full of life, we're gonna put it in there at the beginning. 
right? So all those different compost piles. And when we spread the compost, we're spreading the, the activated biochar. And it has all that time while the compost cooks to be able to activate itself for all those microbes to get locked up in here. This shows what's actually happening inside. So you can see a flame up here, right? You can see a flame through this gap, but that flame's actually not burning the wood because we actually don't want to burn the wood. So what's happening is we have those air holes at the bottom. So we have a small flame down here that's using up all the oxygen that comes through the bottom. And then the heat of that is actually gasifying the organic material in the wood. It's heating it to such a point that instead of burning, it actually gasifies because there's no oxygen. This fire is using up all the oxygen. So from here to here, there's no oxygen, but lots of heat. So it's gasifying all the lignin, all the organic material in that, that, that uh, wood. And then that gas comes up here. We add a little more oxygen and then it burns the gas. And that's how you make, make charcoal. You want it to not burn it necessarily, but you're heating it to the point where it gasifies and what's left behind is only carbon. And so in this particular style of kiln, to know how it's done, basically just take a, a spray hose and a spray at it. If it evaporates right away, it's pretty much done. So like on this side it's done, on that side it's done. There's a little spot here that's a little cool yet, um, but that's okay. So then we just put it out. So that basically means that that fire has gotten all the way down here. It's so hot down here, you know that fire is all the way to the bottom. And so now we just add water. Yeah, we just want to basically stop it now because if you let it go beyond, if you let it go beyond where it's at now, now that fire at the bottom will actually start to go out and then you'll get oxygen coming up higher and then that charcoal will turn to ash. So that's why we're putting it out now. Yeah, lots of steam, lots of heat. This is where the one advantage, a big advantage of a double barrel unit is you don't have to put it out. It'll actually just go out on its own and then you can just come back the next day and collect your, your charcoal. Um, but again, it's a little more time consuming and difficult to construct. This was easier to construct. The only thing is you just have to put it out yourself. Because if I was to leave this and come back tomorrow, this whole thing would just be ash and we'd have no charcoal left. So charcoal too, this, one of the reasons why I like this method too over the double barrel is charcoal tends to be hydrophobic when you first make it. So it actually doesn't want to absorb water, right? It actually spits that water back out. However though, I find if you put water on it when it's still hot like this, it'll crack it open a little bit and allow that water to come in. So it'll allow it to start soaking up the water. Whereas if I let this just cool naturally on its own, right, it would be a lot more difficult to get that water back into that charcoal later. It'll still go in, it just takes more time. Yeah, and finished product. All breaks up, that's cooked all the way through. Another way to tell if it's cooked well, is you can see my hands are not perfectly clean, but if you, uh, if you break it up in your hands, right, it should all just wash off with water. And that means it's cooked well. That means there's only carbon there. There's nothing else stuck in there. Yeah, another way to tell, I don't know if you want, if you want to try it, but uh, if you eat it, it's perfectly tasteless. So that's another way to tell your batch is done. I do. There's no flavor to it whatsoever. <laughs> There's no different than charcoal that people buy in the stores, right? When you have an upset stomach, right? You put a little charcoal in your water or your tea or whatever. This is the exact same stuff. If you don't need to buy it at the store anymore, you can use this yourself. And so how long did it, this process take? So this batch, this was fairly thin stuff, so it burned a little quicker. This batch was like 35 minutes, 40 minutes. Um, if I'm using bigger hardwood stuff, sometimes it's like an hour, hour, 20 minutes, kind of the max that I find. If I'm using really small stuff like corn stalks, it could be 15 minutes, 20 minutes, right? And it's a really quick cook. So it kind of depends what you're using and you'll get used to it. And you'll know what you're putting in there and how long it's gonna take roughly. And that's why we just check on the outside every now and then. And as the water evaporates on the outside, you can see where that fire is and how far down it's made it. Yeah, and you see sometimes you get pieces that aren't fully cooked. Like that's not a fully done piece. It's no big deal. I just set that aside and throw it in the next batch. So when you actually, when you're, when you're, uh, when you're 
washing down the charcoal like this to stop it. This material that's coming off this water is awesome because that's got a little bit of the charcoal in it, right? It's got lots of nutrients. It's, it's great for the gardens. So I like to always do this close to the gardens or what we would normally have. We just don't have it set up right now. Normally we'd actually have compost piles around this just that's where we would keep some of our compost piles. And then when we do this, this will all soak down into those compost piles and we won't lose all this, this uh, dark black water here that has the charcoal in it and lots of nutrients from the ash that was formed, a little bit of ash that was formed. Um, yeah, so anyway, this is great.